has allowed Mares to assault the body. As we take a look, we had some great fights on Show Extreme earlier tonight. Yeah, Luis Ramos won a unanimous decision over Daniel Atta. He's a good young prospect. And then in a surprise fight, Roland Bryant won by a TKO at 219 in round three over Lebrado Andrade, who was once a title contender, trying to get there again. And this sets him back considerably and certainly helps Bryant. Meanwhile, Francisco Vargas, who many believe is a tremendous young prospect, defeated Rafael Laura by TKO. That came at 227 around three. Now, not seen on show extreme, but on the undercard nonetheless, Antonio Escalante stopped Francisco Camacho at two minutes into round four. So as usual, our show extreme fights um, undercard on show extreme producing a lot of fun and everybody's enjoying that. And Al, I was impressed with Brian, and whoever wow. fights him better guard your grill. Because he's <laughs> man, <laughs> you are right about that. He's, he's a man. Andrew Mares in black and white, Eric Morrell in gold and white. We, we are in the fourth round, scheduled for 12. There was a little short hook in there in that combination as soon as they got to the ring in the middle, and it really shook hey, Eric Morrell. He's going to have to do something about getting these getting hit with these hard shots. Morrell switches to lefty. You know, he said before, he said to us uh, in the meeting, I'm going to be a magician in there. I'll do whatever it takes to win. Well, he's been put into a desperation mode, now trying something new, becoming a lefty. He's taking a lot of big shots. I mean, you can see that uh, he's getting where Abner Mars is wearing him down. I mean, Mares, uppercut, double uppercut. Morrell trying to shoe shine on the ropes, not moving as we saw him move in the first couple of rounds. Mares, though, it looks like his punches are heavier, Alan Antonio, yeah. than we've seen with Yanni Perez, with Vic Darchinian, and with the Beko. He's really sitting down on his punches like he's been doing a whole lot of bag work, and you see how he's starting to develop in terms of his muscularity. You know what, hey, this may be the best way for him. I mean, at 18, and maybe took and zapped a lot of his power, a lot of his energy, but right now he seems like he's found his home. I mean, 122, 126, maybe yeah. it's... And, and he had to make 120 for this, so that extra two pounds could help him a bit as well. There's the body work, and of course, he wants to do that against the 36-year-old Morell. Morell's movement not there. That was the question we had. Could he still move? In a fight last year against Luis Maldonado, uh, he did move very effectively, but in this one, no. Uh, you know why? Because those punches to the body and those yeah. big shots to the head, I mean, <laughs> he's worn down now. He's not the same Eric Morell when this fight started. Yep, you're right, because for the first minute and a half, we saw that movement. One thing we've noticed from Abner Mares, he's added kind of like a right kick to the body. He's going behind the elbow, and then he comes back with a looping right hand. Morrell trying to roll off the ropes, keeping his guard up high. And another thing, Gus, when uh, Eric Morrell is pressed on the ropes, and when Abner Mars come close, he looks to reach instead of punch. He's not in position to punch, and that's why he can't give Abner Mars any answers for those combinations. And there have been very few angles from Morrell. There were early, but he's pretty much right in front of Mares. And... Ooh, nice yeah. straight right hand by Morrell. That backs Mares up momentarily. And we will listen in the both corners between rounds. Okay, just try to keep your space. And some more. Hit some more punches. You're going short sometimes. When he throws a jab, you throw your right hand. He's going back, so you got to cut the ring a little bit. We are winning the fight, but you got to cut the ring. And you got to move the waist. And you have to make sure that he comes in, and then you grab him, you catch him with a big punch. If you maintain the distance, you're going to dominate him. He doesn't throw when you give him distance. You worked good that ring. Keep breathing deep. Breathe deep, breathe deep. There's a big round. Let's go, let's go. 
We head into round number five, scheduled for 12 for the vacant WBC Super Bantamweight title. The favorite, Abner Mares, 23 and 0 with one draw, 13 KOs. Moving up to the Super Bantamweight division in the black and white. And Eric Morrell, 36 years old, former Olympian as well in the gold and white, knowing that this is a do or die opportunity for him. One of the nuances that would be easy to miss in this fight is the fact that Mares' defense has been good. He has slipped a lot of punches by Morrell. Ooh. And there he goes to the body again. That right hand. Morrell, the... Morrell came out this round a little bit uh, slicker. Looks as if he's gotten the cobwebs out of his head. There's a little nick on uh, Eric Morrell's left eye. Don't know if it was a punch or a headbutt, but uh, he came out a little bit sharper this time in uh, this round, and we'll see if he can push forward and carry through this round. Small cut on the corner of the left eye for Morrell. The jab now starting to become more effective for Abner Mares as we take a look at the show stats. Total power punch. And 33 of those 87 punches that Mares landed have been body shots. So he has gone downstairs with them. It's going to be important for Morrell to land something big that will turn the tide in this fight. I mean, Abner Mares is having his way, even though Morrell is fighting a, a good, solid fight for a guy that's coming up, but uh, he has to do something big. Yeah. And you know, it, it, Mara's last won a, a or held a title eight years and four months ago. Uh, the longest between titles, I know you gentlemen know, George Foreman, 20 years in between holding titles. Big right hands again. A nice uppercut by Morel though, but it just doesn't stop Mara's. That's a good combination by Morrell. He has to punch when Abner Mars comes forward. He has to surprise him with some punches. He can't just look to hold or absorb that punishment. Mars jab now on display again there is such a key weapon for him. When he jabs effectively, he is so much better. It keeps him in balance, and then he's not lunging, and he did it against Agbeko beautifully, and he's doing it again here tonight. Double left hook. Chopping with the right hand. Mares. As we come to the end of the fifth round. Now Morrell trying to flurry. Well, June 2nd is a big night of boxing here on Showtime because our partner and the champ will be in action as he takes on Latif Coyote, 28-year-old who's <laughs> off to a great start. And champ, Coyote, you guys ran into each other in the uh, hotel today, and all of a sudden you could tell that uh, the friction was beginning, and there's the teeth. He said, I want Tarver, and he's going to get him. Some of the other gentlemen on the car, Winky Wright looking terrific. Former undisputed junior middleweight champion fighting at 160, and Kid Chocolate. Peter Quillen, who said that he's going to take Winky Wright to Pluto, and then Austin Trout. And to me tell you something, his fight against Delvin Rodriguez could be a fantastic fight. Rodriguez is a terrific fighter, and Austin Trout, a great boxer. Sixth round of 12 for the vacant WBC Super Bantamweight title. Abner Mares has dominated this fight thus far in black and white. Eric Morrell trying to figure out this young 26 year old style but right now Mar is way too aggressive and the veteran that Eric Morrell is I'm surprised that he hasn't really focused on the body he's fighting a younger fighter and it's very important that you get your two or three maybe four shots downstairs just to slow your opponent down so when it does the fight does get in the later rounds you're both will be a somewhat of a you know exhausted Mara's story is such an interesting story moving to the United States at a young age in the Hawaiian Gardens section of the Los Angeles area then 
having to be faced with gang life there. His father being tipped off that Mares was getting ready to be initiated, which basically meant a gang beatdown for initiation. His father came in town, told him to pack his bag, sent him to Mexico the next day. He lived in Mexico for three years by himself, had to figure things out at 15 years old. He went to the Mexican boxing Olympic training facility and said, I want to box here. And they said, beat this guy and you'll have room and board. He smashed him. Ended up on the Olympic team in 2004. What a story. Abner Mares. And he and Morell in this round are engaging in really an interesting little firefight. Both men have landed good punches. Mares has been a little harder, but Eric Morell has been sharp with some of his punches, keeping him in the fight. And this is the type of fight that Eric Morell's like. You know, yes. he, he's fighting at his pace, and this is what yeah. Abner Mares can allow to happen because this fight is not over yet, and Eric Morell is still in there trying to win this fight. He needs to continue to press this fight and let Eric Morell know that it's a different level at this, you know, where he's fighting at right now. The point you made earlier, which is a great one, was to slow the fight down. He's done it to an extent, although he just took a big left hook from Mars. And every time he gets on the ropes, that's a no-no for Eric Morrell. He needs to keep the fight in the center of the ring and box. But I tell you, Abner Mars looks good at this weight, man. He's comfortable, and, you know, his skin looks good, muscles, and I think he can go up a few more pounds and be strong. Certainly 122 will work. Here's another right hook by Mares. And the goal for all the fighters in this weight area is Nonito Donaire. Nice and calm, nice and calm. That was a better round. 